soon. Sometimes, you know, when you are ministering, you wonder how much you should read. Um, and I could really read a lot of this chapter to bring us to where uh, I want to share the Word of God this morning. But if I could, I'd like to just really start at verse number 10 and read down verse number 13. I'll bounce back and we'll reference verse number uh, 4 through 5 in a, in a few moments if you can keep your finger there. The Bible says in verse number 10, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. And be ready against the third day, for the third day the Lord will come down in the, in the sight of all the people upon, the, upon Mount Sinai. And the people shall set bounds, and thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about you. I and mean, that's really what I want to focus on. Thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourself that you... Uh, Go not up into the mountain, or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mountain shall surely uh, shall be surely put to death. There shall not be a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through, whether it be beast or man. It shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mountain. Amen. I just simply want to ask you this question. Where does the mountain start? Where does the mountain start? Amen. I'll give you a little bit of information to help you understand where I'm going. Amen. The Word of God has set clear standards. God has spoken to Moses. And He said, I want you to take three days and I want you to sanctify yourself. I want you to wash your clothes. I want you to wash your bodies. It wasn't just a physical, but it was also that of a spiritual and emotional that they were to wash and cleanse themselves. Amen. I, I, jumping up to verse number 4, God says to him, For I have seen, uh, for you have seen what I, I, I did to, to the Egyptians, and how, how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and then keep my covenant, then ye shall be a particular treasure unto me above all the people, for all the earth is mine. Amen. What a great thought that God bore them on eagles' wings. When the storm was raging down below, God allowed them to soar, soar above the clouds. Amen. And bask in the sunlight. God bore them upon eagles' wings. Amen. There was strength in the things of God as God took care of them. A, a, a judgment was being poured out on the Egyptian. But all oh, God made provision for His people. Amen. He opened up the Red Sea. He saw them through in safety. Amen. He began to pray provide for them in ways that they would never recognize or, or know, but knowing that it was God. Amen. A cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night, fresh manna every morning, amen, angel food if you would, that God provided for them. Clothes that would never wear out, amen. They wasn't worried about style. They were worried about the longevity of their clothes or shoes, those things keeping, and God did that for them. God said, I, I bore you on eagle's wings. If you listen to me, you're a particular people. I own all the world, but I'm going to take good care of you because you are mine if you listen to me. Yes. Amen. That's interesting. So I, I, I'm drawn to that, that God is a God of mercy. How merciful He was to His people, and He continues to be merciful still. Amen. Uh, and, 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 and there are clear and uh, uh, certain terms in which uh, God certainly is merciful and His grace lives in our life. I like how, what the Word of God says in Lamentations. It, it, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. Uh, amen. They are new every morning. Great is that faithfulness. Thank God for our merciful God. Are you with me? 
I said, thank God for a merciful God. Uh, uh, Psalms, David says, he said, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He's slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and His tender mercies are over all His works. God is compassionate. God is merciful. The Bible says, and you hath He quickened. Who was dead uh, 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 in your trespasses and sin, whereas in times past you work, walked in the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air, uh, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. But he says, but the grace of God has worked in you. The mercy, the grace, the compassion of God, it's overwhelming. However, I need to bring balance this morning. And I feel like as a pastor, this is the morning God has been stirring my heart. Amen. To let you know that remember this fact too. God is compassionate. God is merciful. God is gracious. But God has a backbone. That's right. In the middle of all this, amen, don't ever mistake Him his, 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 his grace and His mercy that God is a winner. That He won't stand by His righteousness. Don't ever confuse His, his, his kindness for Him being wishy-washy. Amen. His compassion. Amen. Don't ever think it's confusion on His part. Uh, amen. Just because He's compassionate in areas in which we should be consumed. Amen. He's not spineless. He's not limperous. Amen. He's not a God that cannot make up His mind. Amen. I need to tell you this morning that to preach the whole truth of the Gospel, that God is not a God to be messed with this morning. God is holy and God is righteous. Amen. And God puts boundaries and God puts limitations on things in our life and we need to live by those limitations. Now this is a tough message for a pastor to preach. And even as we uh, get closer to the coming of the Lord, we live in a church world that preaches nothing but love and grace. Amen. Doesn't preach any uh, repercussions of sin. Amen. Doesn't preach any boundaries. Amen. But the Word of God is contrary to that. God is a God of righteousness. God is a God of boundaries. God is a God of requirements. God wants our lives to have boundaries. And He sets them for us. So as, as, as we look at the Word of God, I need to tell you that if you need example for boundaries that we live in, ask us. Uh, he, had, he had grown up around the Ark of the Covenant being in his house, and uh, as it was moving uh, there throughout the valley, amen, he touched the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant, and, and the wrath of God was poured out upon him, and the name of the place was Perez Uzzah, amen, because Uzzah had breached, amen, the boundaries of God. God's presence. Do you realize that when the presence of God blows in the house and we feel Him in our midst, it's never anything to take for granted, but it should arrest our hearts, our minds, and our souls and remind us that we are standing on holy ground. Moses took off his shoes when he realized that the presence of God was so powerful before him. God, it's in your presence that I take my shoes off because you're a holy God and you're worthy. Amen. There are boundaries. So if, if it's not just us, uh, would you remember uh, uh, Nadab and Abinu who offered strange fire unto God and, and God consumed them because of that? Amen. Do you remember that when the children of Israel forgot about the goodness and the provisions of God and the faithfulness of God? Amen. They took it for granted. They were murmuring and complaining. Then God sent serpents in the wilderness, fiery serpents that would come and they would bite them and they would die. Amen. God did provide a remedy. Amen. Through, through, through that uh, uh, serpent that would be lifted up. It was a sign of the cross. You have a problem with murmuring and complaining. And Sister Tina, you said so spot on this morning. Amen. That even in the midst of life, how do we do this? How do we handle this? Because God has given us a fruit in our life that is producing. And it's called joy. And it's called long suffering. And it's called kindness. Amen. Even in the middle of life, God wants us to remember that our focus is upon Him. And the remedy, amen, is the cross. So there's boundaries. I can't be a murmurer. I can't be a complainer. I can't be a 
down and outer. Amen. Because God has placed boundaries upon me. Amen. 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 I'm talking about self-evaluation today. What are the boundaries? Amen. Sister Linda, you said you went to college and the way they were dressed and the way they were listening. Uh, it's because we live in a world that has no boundaries. In fact, every generation pushes the envelope a little bit farther. Amen. They want to be a little bit more extreme. Let me just tell you, when I was a child, amen, any of you out there in my generation, amen, can you imagine uh, seeing folks with big pogs in their ear, amen, every kind of wild hairdo, and some folks, amen, walk around in public as if they're not even wearing clothing. You know why? Because they're pushing the limits. But God doesn't change even though each generation pushes the limits. Yesterday I watched a, a very encouraging video that someone shared. My wife later told me, I think Sister Tina, you shared it. Amen. I almost put it up on, 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 on video today and maybe should have. But it was all about a young lady from the Philippines who was trying to, out to be Mrs. Universe. Very beautiful young lady. In fact, uh, in her journey over 10 years of trying out for Mrs. Universe, she had fell in love with Jesus. She no longer worked, uh, uh, she no longer modeled the same way in the swimsuit competition because she said, I can't dress that in modest anymore. Amen. God puts boundaries on things. God was getting in her heart and working. Amen. He gets into every area of our life. Amen. When she was being interviewed, she talked about how that she had been put out of being Miss Philippines because uh, 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 she was born as an illegitimate child. She didn't have a father. But she said she fought for her right. That was nothing to do with her. But she showed later on in her video how that she had grown the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, a beautiful woman. But she said, I have no love interest right now because it's not there someone who sparks that. And I've learned that Jesus Jesus Christ is my satisfaction. I've long got over that of needing someone because I was born an illegitimate child to a father who didn't want to support me, to a father I don't know, and I found Jesus Christ. Do you know what? When Jesus gets in our life, He sets some boundaries in our life. We no longer live the same way, but we grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And you say, I can't I inhabit that part of the mountain because God said, don't go to the mountain. Where are the boundaries? Amen. Where are the boundaries of the church? Where are the boundaries of society? It's in everything that we do. Amen. The way that we live and conduct our life. Amen. I, 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 I hate often using little things of entertainment, particularly when it comes to my family. But let me say, that's very easy to flip on YouTube and see all kinds of things. And sometimes as a parent, you're pretty busy. You can throw stones at me. It's okay. I'm normal. Amen. My life is busy. Sometimes my little girls, and sometimes I come by, and you know what? I see some things that may be okay for other people to let their children watch, but this is not God honoring in our house. And you're not going to watch Watch this YouTube video because it does it best honor God. You know what? Because we have to draw boundaries. We have to draw the line in the sand and say, this is not a wise choice for my spirituality. This is not a wise choice for my growth in Jesus Christ. This is not a wise choice for my testimony. So I choose to draw the line in the sand. God says, don't go into the mountain. Amen. Or you'll be consumed. So I draw the line. Amen. And we think about Nebuchadnezzar. Ask him where the lines weren't drawn. For seven years, his hair was like feathers. He walked around eating like an animal, grazing in the field. Amen. God does have boundaries. Ask Pharaoh, amen, about the frogs and the flies and the lights and the darkness. And ask him about the very funeral for his own son because God has boundaries. Amen. If you would uh, today think about David, uh, 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 ask him about the pestilence that God had sent because he wrongly numbered the people. God has boundaries. Amen. God does have a backbone. And we need to live, amen, in a generation, amen, that is pushing the limits. But we live in a generation that we need to fear God because it's not changed. So here it is, the Israelites, three months out, out of Egypt. 
And they arrive to Mount Sinai. And God prepares to meet them. And God says to Moses, when he gets there, the mountain is smoked. Amen. Fire. There's a trumpet blast. It's louder and louder. Thundering and lightnings. Amen. But in preparation for this event, God told them that for three days they were to get ready. They were to wash their clothes. I'm coming. And if anybody comes to the mountain and touches it, they will die. Now it's interesting, Brother David, because I don't see that God told Moses specific perimeters to block off the mountain. But thank God that God gave them a preacher. Yes. I'm preaching to myself this morning because it convicts me. Because it's a responsibility from this pulpit to lay out boundaries for people. Why do we lay out boundaries? Because we look at the Word of God. And we take the perimeters that keep folks away from the judgment of God. And we say, these are the boundaries. Don't go past this boundary because there's judgment there. I grew up on a farm in West Virginia and I realized something. That those barbed wire fences, they were good for things. In fact, more than one time I got jugged by the barbed wire fence. But I realized that the barbed bar wire fence, even though it was there, I was a pretty small fellow. I'm bigger than I've ever been. And well, I'm bigger now than I was then. I'll just put it that way. And I realized something when, uh, during those barbed wire fences that I could take that fence and pull it apart and I could climb through. But it wasn't that there was warning there. Amen. So folks can do whatever they want. Amen. But it's necessary for the Word of God to be preached and the boundaries to be placed that there is warning. Amen. We think about that. Amen. The Word of God tells us that, that, that God has given, amen, evangelists and pastors and preachers, amen, and prophets, apostles, amen, for, for the what? For the perfecting of the saints so that there are boundaries that are laid, amen, so that God's people can be perfect and sanctified. I need to tell you something. Jesus is coming again. We started this morning. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes. Amen. But as a King is getting ready to come and appear for His people. Can I tell you that there is a mountain, that there's some boundaries that we have to put around there. Amen. So that we don't die. So that we're not lost. So that we don't lose it. Amen. Before the King comes to visit. Pardon me, but I did this several years ago when I, 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 I looked uh, at it again here a few months ago when when we were in, in, in Bible study. But it's been an interesting thought for me for a few years about how important it is to have boundaries and guardrails in our lives. And then what are guardrails put there for? Because they're put on the inside of something that is safety. Amen. Guardrails are put halfway down the mountain where you're driving around the mountain. Amen. They're put on the inside so that you don't drive off the mountain. And so in our life, there needs to be fences that are built. There needs to be guardrails that are placed so that we keep ourselves in safety. And it's interesting because guardrails are, 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 are put in various places. Part of my sound is falling apart a little bit. But any of you ever recognize a sound that looks something like this? Mm -hmm. Amen. This is simply saying to you that there's a bridge ahead. Uh, you know the road is going to narrow down. Amen. Not only is there a bridge ahead, there's guardrails on the bridge and there's guardrails on the road, but, but I need to tell you that uh, there's, there's very little room for error on the margin of, uh, of a bridge. Do you realize that just here recently, someone uh, uh, in, in one of the New England states, a young boy, uh, 13 years old, amen, found a car that had been missing for, uh, for, for uh, over 20 years because what they believe is the driver was going to attend a wedding, went to a swerve to hit an animal, flew over and, and ran to a lake and, and had been in that lake for over 20 years. They, 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 they got her car out and discovered her body. You know what? The guardrails weren't there to protect her. Amen. Sometimes there's very little room 
for error. So we put the guardrails up to keep us in safety. Amen. Your soul is the most valuable thing that you own. The soul of your family members that you can influence. Amen. Are valuable. There is very little room for error. Amen. You've got to be faithful to God. Amen. You've got to be faithful to the house of God. You've got to be faithful to prayer. You've got to be faithful to the word of God. You've got to be faithful to living holy. Amen. You've got to put God first above everything else. Amen. For the sake of your soul and the soul of those you love. Because there's very little room for error. I wonder this morning, do you have guardrails put up in your life? Are they put up in such a way, amen, that when there's very little room for error, amen, you're going to be all right? How many ever saw a son like this? I said before, I grew up in West Virginia. We saw these signs all over the place. Amen, because there's no straight road. It's just curves. Amen. How many of you have found out life is full of curves? Yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, we, 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 we don't have to be very old. We find that life has a lot of curves. Amen. Uh, it has a lot of turns. Amen. I, I, sometimes you may not be paying attention. You may be driving, and all of a sudden you realize you're going a little bit faster. Amen. Than what you should. Amen. Maybe some of you in here have experienced running into the guardrail. Amen. I, 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 I want to ask for the raise of hands. Amen. Uh, but, but maybe there's some in here that you've ran into the guardrails. I need to tell you something. I'd sure rather run into the guardrails than to run over the mountain. Amen. So we need guardrails in our life. Things that says, God, I'm living within the boundaries of these. Amen. Uh, I, I, I'm living in the boundaries of your word. I've, I've staked the guardrails in such a way that I'd rather hit the guardrails. That's my conscience. Amen. That the Spirit of God quickens my heart, my mind, my conscience. This is where I design to live. God, I'm staying here. Amen. And if you hit the guardrail, it's okay. It's better than hitting over the mountain. Amen. And winding up a greatly injured or dead. How many have you ever seen a sound like this? Mm -hmm. Traffic going in two different ways. Yeah. We're not just going in one direction, but traffic is right beside each other, going the same way. I need to tell you that we are in this world, but we're not of this world. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. There are guardrails and boundaries in our life because we live in a world. Listen, folks, let's 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 do a little bit of mathematics here. How many days are you out in the world? Amen. How many days are you rubbing shoulders with, 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 with a godless generation, with a world that, that has no values and principles? Amen. According to God's word. And then we begin to think about how often we're in church with the people of God. Amen. Statistically speaking, God has sent us out to this world more than we're with each other. Amen. There's coming a day where we'll be with the people of God throughout all eternity. But God has placed us in this world. Amen. And and we need to have guardrails because they're going in a different direction than us. Amen. We love Jesus first. Amen. We love our family. Amen. We love others. Amen. And that's what counts in our value system. Amen. We love Jesus so much that everything that we do in our life has to be orchestrated and, and, and lived in the light of Him. And it has to be according to the Word of God. It has to honor God in everything that we do. So we have to put guardrails on. Moses, Moses, don't let him get to the mountain. Don't let him get there. Because if they do, them or their animal, they will die. Three days, and I'm coming to you. And I'm speaking to you. But in those three days, When's the last time you thought about just sanctification? Allowing God to wash you and cleanse you. Allowing God to work. He's coming. 
And he's coming back for a church without spot and without wrinkle. Today I'm not talking about looking at the, the little bit of speck that's in someone else's eye, trying to get it out. We'll make more than be that's out of our own eye. But it's looking at ourselves and examining. Because there are boundaries that are set. What's holy? What's righteous? God declares, be holy, for I am holy. Lift up holy hands without wrath and without doubt. I'm not talking about a comparison to the world or a comparison to another person, but I'm talking about when we get in the presence of God and we begin to allow the fire of the Holy Ghost to fall upon us and the dross is poured out and the reflection of Him is seen in us. The Word of God says that we are to walk circumspectly. That we are to redeem the time because the days are evil. To be not drunk with, with, new, uh, with wine wherein there is excess, but to be filled with the Spirit. God, help us to be filled with your Spirit. To have the boundaries drawn. I forgot to write it down, but I believe it's every 34 minutes there's a divorce in the United States of America. It's time that we start drawing some boundaries upon our lives, <coughs> upon our marriages, yes. upon our families. Yes. It's about time that we bring back respect for Jesus Christ. Where the things of God are more important than anything else in our life. When we start thinking about the holiness of God above our own happiness. Sometimes we say, well, I want to be happy. And in our physical flesh, it looks like our happiness is contrary to the holiness of God. Because we are born like Adam. Our very nature is against the holiness of God. So to be in the Word of God and to be filled with the Spirit, we find that really the holiness of God equates to extreme happiness in our life. I'm talking about boundaries. God loves you. God is gracious and God is compassionate and God is merciful. But God is a God of boundaries as well. Sister Holly, if you come to the piano, my challenge to you this morning is what are the boundaries? That just like me as a little boy, it's easy to stretch that barbed wire fence and have yourself an easy way through. But the fences are put there for a reason, the guardrails are put there for a reason. You may say, Brother Seville, sometimes I don't know what the boundary of the mountain is. You know, sometimes, have you ever gone to the Rockies or sometimes, Brother Craig, Sister Rachel, you lived in the Ozark Mountains. But Sister Rachel, you grew up in West Virginia like me. I kept saying, where are the Ozark Mountains? Guess what? I was in them. But you hardly recognize because it's kind of an illusion. Sometimes you almost feel like you're going down and you should be going up. But the illusion is you're in the mountain. So God, how do I know what the boundary of the mountain is? If you tell me not to come to the mountain, that the boundaries are shut off. That's what church is about. That's what the preaching of God's Word is about. Listen, you folks know me long enough that I'm not a tangent preacher. I'm not an extremist. We simply want to honor God. But there is a responsibility to say that there are boundaries. And so hearing the preaching of the Word of God, 
and the responsibility of all those who stand behind pulpits have a responsibility to say there are boundaries. We put them like we do guardrails. We put them in a safe place so that if you hit the guardrail, you're still safe. But the guardrails need to be planted. The fences need to be put. It's amazing, Brother Josh. We cut down those locust trees and we sharpen them up, sharpen them up, and we make fence posts. We dig with the fence post digger, and then we pound, pound, pound till they were down in. And then we stretch that barbed wire so that those cows would stay inside the fence because these are the boundaries. The boundaries are important. It's for protection. It's for safety. It's for the best provision. And so when God puts those boundaries in our lives, He does that because He's protecting us and giving us His best provisions of compassion, of mercy, and grace. So today, if you're struggling with some boundaries, would you allow God to put the fence there? Amen. So that you can live in His holiness and experience His visitation. One day, He's coming back for church that lived in the boundaries He gave. Would you gather in this morning? Everybody, would you come with the intent to say, God, put the boundaries of my lifestyle where you want them to be. Put the boundaries, amen, in a sanctified place that best honors you. God, I'm living in the boundaries because that's what you have asked me to do. And in fear and reverence to you, I will commit to living in the boundaries. Amen. Let's make a place of consecration all around these altars of boundaries that we give to God in our lives.